been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out RV Daydream and this is in a series of a few videos that I'm doing to repair my camper. Uh, small stuff that needs to be done and today is a water inlet. It's for the city water hookup and I'll show you what I've got going on. So this is what I got going on here. I've got it rigged up so all the water don't come shooting out because the plastic valve inside here uh, that keeps the water whenever the 12 volt fresh water supply that's on board is switched on it likes to pump it out uh, I found this out the hard way whenever I was winterizing my camper last season and that was I was going through a bunch of antifreeze and I couldn't figure out why everything wasn't pressurizing inside here to come to find out this valve was pumping all the antifreeze out here on the ground so it was time to replace this sometimes it seats sometimes it doesn't so i'm going to fix this and i've got the replacement over here this is a valterra flush mount water inlet and you can see it's pretty much the same as what i got and it comes with some uh, sealant that uh, allows you to put it up against the camper and seal it that way it also comes with some teflon pipe sealant to allow you to thread that onto your pipe that's internal and uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to pull that out let me show you what I got going on there okay going inside the camper you see I got a light set up down in here hopefully the camera will adjust for this but back there in the corner see if I can zoom in right there that's the outlet that I need to get to and I'm hoping that there's enough slack in this hard line that once I unscrew it from the outside, I can pull that connector out and do all the work outside. Okay, so we got the camera set up here. What we're gonna do is unscrew this first, which I don't know how much water is gonna come out here. It may just start flowing. That's eh, not too bad. At least we're not doing anything electrical today too. First thing I'm going to do is uh, remove these three screws. And again, I hope that the other side will come out enough. I'm hoping that this comes out far enough now that I can access that connection. I've got a uh, plastic pry bar here. Go ahead and pull this. This. Uh oh, so far it doesn't feel like there's a lot of give going on in there. Uh, this is probably all the work we're going to be able to do at this point on the outside until I uh, go inside and disconnect that. That's a shame because I was hoping that this would pull out and I would be able to get hold of that hose. It's just not wanting to do so. I mean, this is all the further that line's coming out. So, time to go in and uh, pull that couch frame out of the way and we'll continue shooting at that point to show you how to disconnect it. Okay, so here you see that I've removed the jackknife couch and it's just four screws that go into these front brackets here. Uh, that one there and this one here. Best to flatten out the couch then into a bed. That way you can just slide it into a little hall space like this because if it's in the couch position it's much more bulky. You cannot stand it up on end. It will not go from the floor to the ceiling or even close. Trust me, I tried. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, pinch off the supply hose that's here. Um, let's just do it here just so you can see what it does there. We'll go ahead and pinch that and put the clamp on. So there, water shouldn't siphon out. And unfortunately, I couldn't find any old rags, so I got one of my wife's good bath towels. Don't say anything to Heidi. <laughs> so we're going to disconnect this water valve. Let me go ahead and make a couple little turns with the robo grip. That wasn't bad at all as far as the water. Okay, now let's see how much we can push this out. Much better. Extremely much better. Okay, there's no doubt in my mind at this point that we can go outside and we can do all the work outside just like I planned in the first place. Okay. So everything's out here to where I can get to it. Let me first try to loosen it with the uh, pliers without putting a crescent wrench on that fitting. 
and it looks like it's going to come out. That's good. And hoping that nothing will strip or be a problem. Everything looks pretty good so far. That looks really good inside there. Yeah, this doesn't look bad at all. Um, it's just the valve went bad in here. And I, I don't expect you to be able to see in here, but this thing just doesn't want to seat any longer straight on. It, it goes crooked. It, it does all kinds of weird stuff in there. So it's just time. Now, the first thing I want to do, of course, is uh, clean off all the old putty because at this point we're trying to seal it. Um, I'm going to get a chemical and uh, clean this even more than just scraping. So what I'll do is uh, clean this up with uh, some solvent on a rag and uh, then we'll start the installation of the new one which I'm going to be happy about that. I've never had a cap uh, on my old one. It was lost at some point and It'll be nice to put this in. So, the link for this one's going to be down below. So, if you click the link and get this one, the installation's going to be the same. But you want to make sure that your fitting's the right size. And you know what? This is kind of a standard size. This thing's been around for a long time and they really haven't changed anything. So it says lead free. I'm sure that's important for drinking water. Um, we don't drink this water. Uh, just out of habit I, I'm not sure why I guess we we could a lot of these campgrounds the water smells pretty good I'm sure it's okay uh, the instructions are non-existent but it's pretty self-explanatory uh, the first thing you're gonna do is put some pipe tape on uh, this piece here and of course they include it what you're wanting to do when you do pipe tape is turn the pipe thread in the direction in which it's going to be threaded as you apply the tape. Don't do it in reverse because then when you tighten the tape, unfortunately, it's going to cause it to unravel. So we'll go ahead and start it. You don't want to go real tight for the first wrap until you can overlap it. There you go. And then you can put a little bit more on there. Looks like that they give you more than enough pipe tape. Now, there's different rules on this. People say that you shouldn't use pipe tape whenever you're going into plastic. That may or may not be the case. I don't have a problem with it. All right, so I got one of my picks. And I'm going to try to go down the side without causing any problems and just push along the edge here. Yeah, that's not so bad. That's not bad at all. Yeah, this definitely goes on the end there. So let's try to fit it in here. See how that fits. Looks pretty good. All right, so let's pull this out. That gives me a little bit more room. Like I said, last thing I want is water to be being distributed throughout the camper without me knowing it. That's very tight, much tighter than it was before. Okay, so what I'm gonna do to check to make sure that there's no leaks. Oh, that's kinda nice, it has a screen in there. I think they're all supposed to have screens, but mine didn't. What I'm gonna do is go inside, I'm gonna pressurize the pump, water, the pump. I'm gonna disconnect that clamp that I have going on inside, and I'm gonna see if any water comes out this. So you'll probably see it before me, let me go check that out. It's probably best if you can, just loosen your pump. Don't disconnect it. If your pump will move like mine just did to allow this to come out, you can check for your leaks with it uh, connected up to the system. And I thought, why can't I just pull those three screws out uh, and <laughs> do it that way? And uh, that's what I did. So it's kind of nice because now I can see if it's leaking. And uh, I don't think that it is. It, 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 I mean, I would have seen it by now. Go ahead and put this butyl on the rest of the uh, thing. This butyl that comes with it's really good. And we'll push this back, which in turn, I'm sure, is pushing the pump. 
the screws that they include and uh, run those in. Hopefully these are long enough. The, the ones that I had before were a little longer. I don't know if it was needed. We'll find out though uh, with this first screw. Let's go ahead and start the top one here. Oh, it feels pretty secure to me. Let's see here. I like these. I like this whole setup. Go ahead and put that back in place. Hopefully that lasts longer than the last one did. And uh, go ahead and trim off my excess. All right, so there it is, the final product. I've now replaced my inlet valve. Well, it took longer than I expected, but it got done. And there's a couple of little tricks there that I didn't realize that I uh, could have done. Make sure that you pay attention to how yours is mounted and the size of the pipe thread that's needed. This one that I'm gonna put the link down below is pretty common. It covers quite a few of them. So you're most likely gonna need the one that I had the link to, but just double check. And again, find out where it is, find out what it's gonna to take to get access to the thread, but it should be set up like mine to where once the pump was loose, or that hose was loose, uh, you can pull it out and do all the work outside. Well, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you out there. Bye.